We are back with another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. Today, we have Fred Moskowitz from Liberties Management. This is going to be a fun episode because we are talking about note investing. It's a very uh, very niche type of investing in real estate, but also very lucrative and very passive. So if any of you guys are interested in the truly passive way to invest in, uh, in real estate, today is the episode to listen to. And Fred is here to be our pro. So Fred, thank you very much for hopping on the show. Thank you for having me on today, Gabe. It's great to be here. Absolutely. I, uh, I told you before we got on here, we like stories. We like to hear how people got started in real estate. So why don't you take yeah. us back to the beginning? How'd you get started in real estate? Yeah, that's, uh, well, it's a long, long time ago. I had, <laughs> um, I had a really long, successful career. I was working as a computer engineer. I spent many years working at different technology and startup companies. And so after I watched my entire industry get turned upside down, it was from the bursting of the dot-com bubble. And that was immediately followed by the September 11th terrorist attacks. Oh, all, yeah. this, all this turmoil in the world was going on. The economy was in shambles, and in particular, the tech industry. And what happened was those events made me realize that I was way too dependent on the income from my job because it was my only source of income. And even though I loved the work I was doing, the jobs I had, they were always full of all of these circumstances completely out of my control. And what I learned was that no matter how talented of an engineer I was or how valuable of an employee I was, if things were not going well in the company or in the industry, that I could quickly lose my job through no fault of my own. And so that made me come to the realization that I needed to start to work on building other sources of income so that I wouldn't be so dependent on the paycheck for my job. Mm -hmm. And I dived right into uh, alternative investments, several different different types. I uh, got started with real estate, built up a, a nice rental portfolio. And after a few years, through my education, I started learning about node investing. And what I recognized was that this was something that I could really scale and grow into something big. And so through some different relationships I had, I started really building up a, a portfolio of notes and that has grown and grown over time. And uh, I, I love the business. It's really powerful. And it's something that it's real estate related, but it's definitely a niche area and not a lot of people talk about it, but uh, I'd love Absolutely. to share more details uh, today on the show. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, I, I completely associate with your story. Um, you know, I started in corporate as well, and it's the, there's nothing wrong about being in corporate and working a job. It's a great way to, to go about it, but you definitely can be let go no matter what, especially in certain states. It's uh, um, they don't have, they don't even need, even need to provide a reason. They can just let you go. Um, and so you really don't have control. And so being able to take control back in, by investing in real estate, buying, investing in notes um, can really give a lot of people the peace of mind. So I, I totally get where you're coming from. Um, although I didn't, I wasn't employed during that crash, and I'm sure being an engineer that was a little bit of a scary experience. Um, but I'm glad it brought you to where you are today. So yeah, let's jump deeper into notes. Um, I'm going to be just asking off the cuff here because I know nothing about notes. I, okay. uh, I do have a note on my own. I, I've sold properties as an, an owner with owner financing. So yeah. I hold my own notes, um, but I've never gone out and I've never actually invested in other people's notes. So why don't you, let's start out by just giving me the, the 10,000 foot view of note investing. Um, what does it yeah. look like? What do you look for? How do you find notes? All that stuff. Absolutely. So let's start with what is no, node investing. So as you as you know, a lot of people, a lot of investors love real estate. They invest in houses and commercial property, multifamily, self-storage, all these different 
types of real estate. And most of those acquisitions are done using financing. Yep. And so let's talk about the idea of investing in the paper, which is the notes and the mortgages associated with all of those properties. What I found is it's a really interesting part of the real estate business. However, a lot of real estate investors, they don't pay any attention to it. And for most people, when they think about a note and a mortgage, they think of it from the point of view of being the borrower and not as being the lender. But when you get into note investing, this is what will allow you to step across the aisle and become the bank. And what happens is you transition from being the one making the monthly payments to being the one receiving the monthly payments. And so this is a great way to increase the predictability and stability of your cash flow. Yep. And wh what we do is we buy, we buy notes on properties. Uh, that are located all over the U.S. nationwide. We focus on residential properties simply because that's the most common type of note that that exists that can be purchased. But there exists a, a very large secondary market where notes are bought and sold and traded every single day. So I'm, um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in here because whenever. To me, it just, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, I'm going to use my example. Let's just use my case because, um, mm -hmm. you know, I have a, a note on a property. Um, it's, I think it's 5% interest only. Um, so what would you, as a buyer of a note, what incentive would you have to come and pay me for that note um, when the note that I have is already producing money for me? Yeah, like, that note, that note is producing money for you. And I will tell you that that is a very liquid asset. You could sell that very quickly. And I'm almost certain you could sell it a lot faster than it would take you to sell any piece of real estate. Hmm. And, and here's why. Um, notes are bought and sold at, they're traded at a discount. So there's a discount on the amount owed. So let's say, for example, if you had a $100,000 note, that yeah. note might uh, go for a value uh, or trade at 95000 or 90000 or if there's more risk, the discount would be even greater. And so that allows for some upside for the investor to buy it at a discount. And effectively, what happens is that increases your rate of return. So what mm. might be a 6% note, uh, a 5% note in your example, if that was bought at a discount, that could drive the rate of return higher to 6 or 7 or 8%. And gotcha. so that that's a lot of how that works and yep. here's the thing, I'm sure I'm sure many of you listeners out there uh have taken out financing either buying a property or refinancing and what happens is you go to closing, you sign all the loan docs, and within a couple of months, you get that letter from the, the lender saying, dear Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, please be advised that your loan is being sold. And here's the contact information of the new lender. Um, here's their phone number, their address. Starting next month, please send your payments to the new lender. And by the way, don't worry none of the terms of your financing will change. The payment's the same, the term's the same, the interest rate, all the same. Yeah. And so this happens happened to me many times. Yeah, <laughs> I get that I, I, note. I, I'm like, yeah, it's already been sold. I was like, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And why is that? Because the originating lender, they need to recapitalize so that the next day they can turn around and originate a new loan for someone else. Interesting. Okay. And that makes a lot of sense, especially when you're um, when you're thinking about if you have other outside investors uh, investing in your in your deals. Um, if I can't get a property sold at a price that I want, um, it's a lot easier to increase that price if I offer seller financing. Uh, the problem yes. with that is seller financing. You are spreading out the the final payment, the balloon payment, a number of years down the road, which will decrease the IRR that you're returning to your investors. But what you're saying is if you can find somebody to buy that note from you, you can increase the rate of return 
just by, you know, bringing that, that balloon payment closer to you, um, which makes a lot well, of sense. Well, you, you, yeah. And you would, you would sell that at a discount. So yeah. you would sell the property for a higher price, but then you can sell the note at a discount and yep. recoup your capital and uh, notes can sell quickly within, within a couple of days or, um, or a week is very common, especially if you're dealing with uh, a, a note buyer that is experienced and understands the business. They will be able to move pretty quickly and fund the transaction. Yep, yep, that makes sense. Um, so it makes sense why why you would want to invest in notes. How do you go about actually doing it? Like, where do you find notes? How do you buy them? Like, they don't just exist out there in in a you know, in yeah. somebody's drawer or something like that. So well, they do. Well, yeah, <laughs> they <true. laughs> they absolutely do. Trust me, we we have many drawers here, um, but it, they're not that easy to find. Uh, you have to find them. It's basically through direct uh, relationships. So yeah. those of us in the note industry, we all know each other. We network, we go to conferences and events. And so that's really where, where you get to meet people. Um, it's certainly possible to do direct marketing to note holders. And I know some investors that are very successful at doing that, but, and, and you may, you may even get get letters sent to you from time to time asking if you're interested to sell your note. Mm -hmm. But really the big way is it's through relationships. We buy, uh, buy notes from other uh, note funds and uh, different institutional investors that are in the practice of buying large pools of notes. They'll buy them from, from the banking institutions and then they'll separate them into smaller pools, smaller uh, groups, and then sell them off. And that happens all the time. And a lot of this, it's through personal relationships. You do have to, to get involved in an active level, build those relationships. And then that's what uh, that's where note, note transactions can take place. Yep. That makes a lot of sense. Real estate is all about relationships. We say it this is. so many times on the podcast. Um, and it's true in notes as well. So love to hear that. So um, scaling, you know, whenever people mm -hmm. think about getting into any asset class, any type of real estate, they're always thinking about how can I do this again? How can I scale it? How can I make it bigger? Um, when it comes to scaling your note business, what is the thing that kind of allows you to scale it to the next level? Well, there, there's a couple couple points I'll touch on. Um, there, there's actually two ways of investing in notes. You can go out and acquire the assets individually, or if you want to be more passive, you can invest in a note fund. And think of a note fund similar to real estate syndication, where the fund managers raise capital, uh, they have an offering, and then they'll go out, pool all the capital, and then go out to the secondary market and buy notes in bulk and so that allows for uh, better pricing, better access to notes, better deals, and it allows the investors to leverage the relationships and the experience of the fund operators. So for some people that want to be uh, truly passive, that that's a way that um, to get involved. And so with the scaling, what that does, the benefit there is that your capital is diversified across hundreds of notes or thousands of notes even. And so that does a, a lot for uh, managing risk and uh, allowing to scale. Now, and whether it's um, investing in a note fund or individual investors, a lot of the scaling comes from uh, the different vendors we use, uh, using loan servicers to handle the day-to-day -day activities involved with owning a note. They The loan servicer will collect the borrower payments. They'll keep track of the accounting. They'll keep track of the amortization schedule. They'll generate those IRS forms that have to go out at the end of the year for the interest statement, interest paid. 
and uh, taking phone calls from the borrowers in case anything is needed. So they handle all of that for a very reasonable fee. And uh, I'll, I'll give you an analogy. The way that the same way that a property manager manages a rental property for you, a loan servicer is going to manage the note on behalf of the investor. So that's a very important vendor in this business. And that really is what facilitates the scaling. Yep. Yep. That makes sense. And there's definitely good and bad note uh, or um, servicing companies. We've uh, I've had, you know, servicing companies on both sides, ones that were really good and ones that were really bad. And you definitely want to find a good one or else it'll be a headache trying to get the paperwork that you need from them. Well, it, it, it yeah, that's true. But it, it does come down to finding a good fit. There are some servicing companies that are more set up for handling very large portfolios of thousands of notes. And then there's other, <clears throat> other note servicers that they're well set up for working with small investors. Maybe you have one note or four or five, and it it's a matter of just finding the, the right fit for you as an investor and also for the asset types, the type of notes that you have. Yep. That also makes a lot of sense. Um, so when you're investing in these notes, what are you specifically looking for? Like what makes a good note is, I mean, do you really care about where the, you know, the collateralized asset, where it's located? Do you care about, um, what are you looking for essentially when you're, when you're investing in these notes? Yeah, there's, there's a number of different parameters we look at and there's no right or wrong answer here. Um, it comes down to a lot of it is to how much risk you're your risk tolerance, how much mm -hmm. risk are you comfortable with? And like anything else, higher risk is going to give you a higher rate of return. If you want lower risk, then you'll have a lower rate of return. So what are the, some of the things we look at? Certainly the collateral, the property is what's the equity position? What's the local real estate market where it's located? Is it located in an urban area or a suburban area or a rural Right. So you can look at all of those things. Uh, we buy notes all over the U.S. And so that's one of the advantages is it doesn't need to be geographically uh, close to you, it can be anywhere. And so um, other other parameters we look at are the borrower, of course, their credit history, credit profile. What's the track record on the note? Uh, are all payments being made on time and has that been the history on it or uh, is the borrower in a, some type of seasonal work where there's a couple of months out of the year where they get a little late or a little behind but then after that period's over then they get caught back up again so you you'll see some patterns like that or is there a borrower that uh, routinely uh, is missing payments and um has a history of going into into default so you have some different different things there and that that you take a look at consider and and see now there's there's some other characteristics as well is the note residential or is it commercial or is the note on a residential property but it's a hard money loan for a real estate investor that they, they have those as well with very high interest rates and it's a short term loan for 12 or 18 months. And so you can see all of these different types of notes out there and consider that what's a good fit for you um, according to your experience level and your risk tolerance. All right. Um, that makes a lot of sense. And so I know we already touched over this earlier i just checked took a look at the clock we're running down the clock and so i want to ask one last question for people who want to get involved in investing in notes um and they want to buy their first note where should they go to uh to look for that note i would start with um before looking for for the note i would start with education first uh there are many resources uh books courses and workshops you can attend. So start there first, because if it's very easy for a new investor to lose a lot of money very quickly if they don't know what they're doing. So that that's one, one uh, thing that I definitely want to highlight. So where to go? 
where to go. You can talk to uh, real estate investors that maybe have a property they're selling and they're selling it with owner financing. You can meet them at real estate investment groups, at uh, investment conferences and events. There's always in any real estate group, there's always a couple of guys that are involved in notes in some form or fashion, uh, or you can attend specifically note industry uh, events as well. And when you do that, you're going to be in a room full of hundreds hundreds of node investors, and there'll be some funds, note funds that sell notes. There'll be individual investors. Everyone always is buying and selling notes because they need liquidity for a new deal. And so they'll sell off a couple of notes. And so uh, it's about building those relationships, getting to know people and uh, being focused. Makes sense. All right. And if uh, you mentioned earlier, people should start with education, they should start with yeah. uh, learning more about notes. Do you have like one really good resource that you could re recommend people to go to? Yeah, absolutely. There's a couple of excellent books that, that I can recommend. Uh, one that I really love that um, has been out for a while is called Invest in Debt by Jimmy Napier. And um, that one really uh, covers a lot of the mechanics. And um, uh, in addition to that, uh, my book that uh, recently came out is called The Little Green Book of Node Investing. <laughs> you can find that on Amazon. And we cover uh, a, a nice high-level overview of node investing, how it works. We have some great case studies in there. So you can see some real actual deals and how they um, how they how they function, um, as well as uh, introduction topics to doing due diligence, how to find notes, how to analyze notes. So th right. those are some great, great ways to get started. Perfect. And I'm actually going to use that as a segue into our quick question round. So are you ready okay. to rock? Yeah, let's let's dive right in. Let's do it. Uh, the reason that's a segue is the first question in the quick question round round is about education. Oh. I want you to give me two recommendations, one general life wisdom, one real estate. You just gave me the real estate one. Um, so invest in debt by G Jimmy Napier. And then your book, the little green book of note investing by yes. Fred Moskowitz. You can find that on Amazon. Great recommendation. Now just give me one more recommendation for life wisdom. For life wisdom. Wow. There's so, so much there. Uh, something I really like. Uh, this is with a business focus is uh, learn about taxes, learn, get educated uh, on taxes, tax strategies, attend some workshops and seminars. You don't need to be a tax expert. Definitely leave that to your CPA. They're going to handle the implementation of the strategies, but it's up to you to learn what they are mm -hmm. and understand. So you can see if that's something that that makes sense for you and then of course work with your with your team with your CPA your advisors but i'll tell you as an investor if you're doing a good job you're going to be generating lots of tax liability and so it's so important if you can put in strategies in place to minimize or reduce your taxes to be more efficient that's going to drive up your rate of return more than most investing activities, it's going to really uh, turbocharge what you're doing. So I always encourage, uh, find some good good experts out there, some good educators in the tax space and learn from them. All right. Good, uh, good advice and something I need to take to heart myself. I don't know enough about taxes and I've had plenty of tax guys on here. Um, there's a lot to learn in the tax sphere. So Good advice. I'm going to move us on to the next question. And this is for your younger self. Let's go back to the Fred who was just, he was an engineer right before the dot-com bubble, um, you know, working wherever he was working back in the day. Go back to him, look him in the eye, give him one piece of advice moving forward. Surround yourself with people that are playing at a higher level. Mm, so whatever you aspire to do, Find the people that are already doing that and then spend time with them, hang out with them. Because as, uh, you know, a, a great quote I love by Jim Rohn, that you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. 
This is so true. If you're working uh, in a business and you're earning $100,000 a year in your business and you want to get to the million dollar a year level, well, start hanging around with other people that are already at that million dollar a year business level because you're going to start hearing about the problems they have and how they solve them. And everyone's going to be sharing ideas and uplifting and up leveling each other. And so you're going to get into a different mindset. Uh, your goals are going to change. Your habits are going to change. And that is going to lead to a lot of growth. Great advice. Surround yourself with the people you want to become. Love it. All right, moving us on to the next question, and this is about your business. Every business is built uh, with the people that actually run the business. So uh, we're not talking about individual people here, but we are talking about positions. So what were the first three positions you hired for, and would you do it differently if you did it today? Yeah, the first positions I hired for were admin, administrative, and um, for marketing as well to help because it's a lot of work, a lot of work. And you can't be, if you're going to, if you think you're going to go through being a business owner and entrepreneur by yourself, trust me, you can move a lot faster if you start hiring out the things you're not good at, but start the first one to start with is a, a an administrative assistant, they're going to help you. They're going to help take things off your plate so that you can start to focus more on the income producing activities that you're good at. And that's going to really lead to a lot of growth for you. All right. Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, starting with a VA or an admin, it's a great way to get started um, because there are so many things that pile up and you don't really realize how much time something takes until you don't have to do it anymore. And now you're like, wow. I was yeah. wasting a lot of time doing that activity. So great advice. I'm going to move us on to the next question. And this is about the United States. It's a big place, a lot of opportunity out there, a lot of square miles. What one Metro are you most excited about investing in your note business today? Well, wow. wow. Um, that's something we don't, we don't focus on. You don't and really here- talk about that in the note world. No, because you bought we at when you're buying at a higher level, you're buying in pools and they're they're going to be mixed. Uh, the metro I love is the United States overall. Uh, yeah. Being geographically diversified is uh, valuable. I wouldn't want to concentrate only on one state or one region. So that that's something we we strive for is that diversification. All right. We're just going to say the whole U.S. I love that. Um, moves us on to the next question. And this is about marketing. You already talked about it. There's tons of ways to find good deals. Uh, we all have our favorites. So what is the your top number one favorite way to find good uh, good note deals? The top favorite way is to be an upstanding person in bis- in your business dealings. Integrity, do what you say you're going to do set some good examples, leave an impression with the other person that you transacted business with so that they walk away and say, wow, I love, I love doing a deal with Fred. I want to do another one. Well, guess what? The next time they have a transaction come up, they may call, they may call you first. Get into that spot where you're top of mind. You, you did, a great job at leaving a good impression, doing what you said you were going to do, following through, honoring everything that you agreed to. And you'll get those calls, whether you're buying notes or you're buying a property, whatever it is, be top of mind. Yep, your reputation precedes you all the time. If you have a good one, it will uh, it will work for you better than any marketing campaign. That's for sure. Absolutely. And that leads us to the next question. This is about mentors. None of us are islands. We all stand on the shoulders of giants. So who is one mentor who has contributed significantly to where you are today? Wow, there's so many. There's so many mentors. Um, I'll share share one that has been very impactful for me. I'm from Philadelphia, 
And so I like to look to one of our founding fathers of this country, Benjamin Franklin. And here's why he left us with this great quote that I really love. And I, I feel that it's relevant for everyone. And it goes like this, an investment in knowledge always pays the highest dividends. And what that means is it emphasizes how important it is to invest in yourself, invest in your education and your growth, because that's something that's going to let you come go to the next level. And it's also something that can never be taken away from you. The skills that you build, the expertise that you have, the experience can never be taken away from you. And so invest in yourself, set aside money in your personal budget, have it as a line item for your education, for your, your growth, for attending events and conferences, taking courses, taking workshops, that is one of the best investments that you can ever make. And that's something I learned from a mentor of mine, Benjamin Franklin. I love it. You're the first person to say uh, Benjamin Franklin, but that is a great, um, a great mentor to have. He's, uh, you know, he is the OG investor when it comes to, um, to being wise with your time, with your wealth, with everything. So great recommendation, Benjamin Franklin. I remember when I was a uh, really into the self-development kind of genre of books. Um, what was he, he wrote a book that was, was really small, but I really, I loved it. I can't remember what it was called. Um, dang it. Slipped my mind, but Benjamin Franklin, everybody knows yeah, he's him. He's written many books. Yeah. Yeah. Very wise, yeah. man. I'm going to move us to uh, the second to last question. And this is about your own strengths. We are all gifted with strengths that we uniquely give this world. So what is your Superman strength? My strength is building relationships. I love, love focusing on building relationships and inspiring a deeper level of connection whenever I meet someone or interact with someone. And I feel that no matter what you do, what business you're in, that is a skill that always will serve you well. For sure. Relationships are the, the very foundation of everything we do here in your personal life and in your professional life. So that is yeah. a great Superman strength to have. Um, and that leads us to the last question. And this is for the listeners. I'm sure people want to reach out, learn a little bit more about node investing. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't you tell the people what is it that your company does, obviously, or, or what do you offer um, the book, for instance, where can they find that? And then what is the best place for someone to go and get in contact with you? Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, so my book is, as I mentioned earlier, it's called The Little Green Book of Node Investing. You can find it on Amazon. And if you, you'd you like to learn more about what we do, uh, you can visit my website, which is fredmoskowitz.com. However, if you prefer an easier spelling, you can visit giftfromfred.com. And you can sign up to uh, request a special report. I'd be happy to send out on node investing, can learn a little bit more about it. And if you prefer to use your mobile device, here's another option. You can text me as well. Just text the word money to this phone number, 215-461-4433. And then follow the prompts. I always love connecting with investors, learning about what, about what people are doing in the investment space. There's so many great strategies out there. Uh, I always look forward to networking and uh, connecting with others. Thank you so much for having me on, Gabe. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for hopping on. Um, for everybody who just heard that, if you guys want to get out and get in contact with Fred, uh, the two URLs, giftfromfred.com, fredmoskowitz.com, and then also the phone number 215-461-4433, which you can text money to. I will put all of those in the show notes. So if you want to reach out, just click a little more in the description and that pulls down the full description. There you can find all that jazz. So again, Fred, thank you very much for hopping on. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you for having me on, Gabe. It was fun. Absolutely. For everybody who's here with us today, thank you guys for showing up. You are the reason we do this. So if you guys have any questions whatsoever, reach out to me, Gabe at the real estate investing club.com. 
And if you guys want to support the show, all we ask is you give us some love by uh, throwing us a thumbs up, sharing the episode, whatever it is uh, with, with whatever platform you're on. Other than that, hope you guys have a great week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. We'll be right back.